Good morning for you, sir. Hey, thanks. OK, so I hope uh, you can see my screen here. Let me here. Here's the syllabus for the course. And we're in. Um, week two here and I have the, the videos here posted on week two. And in particular, they say right here, uh, loan amortization, which uh, is uh, is covered in these videos. And loan amortization is uh, what I like about doing that calculation is that it's um, it's a useful and non-trivial example of the kinds of things we can do in uh, in Excel. And so I thought I would try to go through a calculation uh, using some of the Excel functions that we have. Um, and uh, I, uh, I started putting together this example here and I didn't get finished. So you can see me as I try to go through it, trying to remember uh, how, uh, how I might do this. Um, and I, I got this much written out. So let me let me show you um, how how I got this set up to this point. And amortization calculation is what I'm calling this exercise. And um, so uh, to do just to set up this title here, I took the first two columns A and B and I use merge and center to merge them together and then I type in the words amortization calculation um, then I go up here and I pick a font size and I use font 16 and I just wanted to make it stand out as the as the title of the calculation we're trying to do and I set the color of the font to green right in this area right in here. And this is a, a pretty typical layout, what you find in Microsoft uh, applications such as Word, which I'm sure you're familiar with. And so that's how I get out amortization calculation. Now the idea with loan amortization is that say you go to a bank or someone else and you borrow some money and uh, you have an agreed upon interest rate. So for example, uh, I'm going to borrow $10,000 uh, at uh, 5% per year, sometimes called 5% per annum. Now first off here, notice I have the dollar sign symbol in front of the number. Let me remind you how you might get that. That's not essential for doing the calculation. But again, I go to the ribbon here in Excel, and then right here, I can choose sort of a format for putting my numbers in. And um, when you first start off Excel, it might be just set to general, and I set it to currency, and currency is uh, how I get uh, this format. So this would be dollars and cents. Uh, and um, so I take my interest rate to be 5%. Now, usually when you borrow money from a bank, uh, or which could be a credit card, right? You borrow money when you charge things on a credit card. Uh, the, you're given a, an annual interest rate. That is, if you kept the money for a year, how much extra would you have to pay back to the bank? Now, I'm taking this to be a loan that you might get for buying a car, let's say, and I don't know how the banks there in Kyrgyzstan work, but let's say uh, a rate I might have here in the United States would be 5% a year. Now, when we pay back a loan, we pay back the way it's usually set up is we pay back a certain amount every month. And our interest rate is calculated on a monthly basis. So there are 12 months in a year. So 5% in a year would be 0.05 divided by 12 uh, in a month. So 
that's a calculation I do here. Now notice this calculation is B3 divided by 12. B3 is this number right in here. Okay, here's our 5% divided by 12. So I borrow $10,000 and then one month into the loan, I will now owe the bank 10,000 plus an additional 0 0.0041666. That's um, a fraction that goes on forever there, a decimal. Um, uh, in the, at the end of that first month. So at the end of the first month, I owe the bank back this much, which is the original 10,000, which is B2, plus B4. Um, uh, okay, here's the B2 plus B4 times B2 is what I owe the bank now at the end of the first month. So it's this times this plus that again, that gives me this much. Okay, now I I have to figure out how long I, I want to take to pay back the loan and how much I should pay every month. Now, usually I prefer to pay the same amount every month uh, just to keep it clear in my head. And uh, so let's look at this calculation now. So I'm borrowing $10,000 and an interest rate of 5% a year, which becomes this amount per month. So at the end of the first month, I now owe the bank this much money. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to make a payment that's due at the end of the month. So if I pay $50 at the end of the month, uh, so this is how much I currently owe the bank, I pay $50. So the amount remaining that I will owe after I pay that $50 is going to be this 10,000 minus 50, which is this amount right here. And that's what I have showing up here, B6 minus C6. B6 minus C6 gives me that much. So I haven't actually paid off much of that original $10,000, about $8. I paid, made a payment of $50, but only $8 of that $50 has gone back to paying off my original $10,000 loan. And um, so it's pretty easy to see here, for example, if I only paid exactly $41.67 instead of 50, let me just put that in there, right? So 4167. I'd still owe the bank ten thousand dollars. So the only thing I would have done with by paying 4167 is just paid off the interest that I accumulated in that month. Now this is um, this is where credit cards usually get people is that when you ch put things on a credit card uh, the amount that you have to pay off every month is only a little bit more than the interest you've accumulated over that month so because of that I mean the the banks would actually like you to have let's say not paid off any of your original amount because that means you're going to have to pay them forever. Every month you'll pay 4167 and you can be paying this forever and never make a dent in that original $10,000. So the when you borrow money on a credit card, the minimum monthly payment that you're supposed to make is only a little bit higher than the interest you've accumulated that month. And uh, so I say I'm paying $50, which isn't very much, especially let's say I want to pay this loan off in five years. Five years is 60 months. So I could ask the question, if I pay $50 a month on that original $10,000 loan, can I pay it off in five years? And 
it's pretty clear, I think, that it's not going to be paid off in five years at that. So when I do amortization calculations, the principal question I'm asking is, what do I have to pay back every month so that it, at the end of five years, I have paid off the loan? And, and typically the way we do this is we go to a bank, we borrow money, they say, what do you want to be the term of the loan? And if I say five years, they compute the amount I'm going to have to pay them every month to pay the loan off in five years. Now, if I say 10 years, of course, the amount that I owe them every month is less. But if I look at the interest I have accumulated over those 10 years, it could be pretty high compared to the original amount of the loan. So let's go through this calculation. Let me go through and show you how we can figure out how much we need to pay every month and um, uh, and the implications of all this. And then if with a little bit of luck, um, uh, uh, we can use uh, a function, a built-in Excel function called goal seek to help us do this calculation. And um, it's actually been a few months since I have last used goal seek. So I'm hoping here that I actually remember how to use goal seek too. Okay, so if I pay $50 every month, now let me uh, let me show you some things uh, that I do in Excel uh, to make uh, setting up the spreadsheet uh, pretty uh, pretty easy and pretty straightforward. But they're also easy things to make a mistake at if you're not careful. So I have this set up. This calculation is, in fact, the original loan amount plus this monthly percentage times the original loan. So that's where this is coming from. Now, at the end of the first month after I paid $50, I now owe the bank this much. So I'm going to, on this line, I'm going to use this amount as my loan amount. So, and so I'm going to take this plus this 0.0041% times this to compute that. So look at what I have here. I have one plus B4. So that's one plus 0.004166 and so on. That's here, this is B4 times D6. And D6 is this amount. So this is now what I will owe at the end of the second month. So I still I still owe more than ten thousand dollars. It's it's a little bit less than I had at the end of the first month. I pay fifty dollars. So I subtract this from that amount, and then this is now the new amount that I still owe the bank at the end of the second month. Now I've been showing you with Excel how we can you know repeat um, operations as we go down a row and uh, so it might be tempted to s click here select this and then i shift click here so i accept all uh, i i i now select all three of these cells and what happens if i take this corner and i drag it down once well something strange is happening i'm not even getting a number here or here now the fifty dollars came down. Now when I get this, it's a sign that perhaps I've done something wrong. So let's look at what this calculation is that is not giving me an answer. It's one plus B five times D seven. Now let's. What did I have up here? I had one plus B four times D six. So notice that it has incremented this cell from B4 to B5 and incremented this cell from D6 to D7. And that's not exactly what I wanted to do. B5 is now this month. So here's what I had before when I did this calculation, I had B4, which is this. But when I moved down here, I got B5. B5 is the word, uh, is some words here. It's not a number. So it's, 
Excel tries to do that calculation, it says, whoa, something's wrong. So that's wrong. I don't want B5. I still want B4. And D7 here, D7 is this amount. That is, uh, that's what I want. I want that amount. So, but th when it incremented from B4 to B5, I didn't want that. That gives me the wrong calculation in this cell. And uh, so in Excel, the way I fix that, I don't, when I don't want the cell reference to increment by dragging down, what I do is I put dollar signs in front of the cell reference. Now, if I put a dollar sign in front of B, it'll stay on B4. You know, I actually don't need the dollar sign in front of B for this calculation. I only need the dollar sign in front of four, but I might put it in front of both. So let me just put it in front of four here. So I put D4 there. So I now what happens then when I drag this down, it doesn't increment the board four to a five. So let me, I select, shift click, uh, and select the whole three cell values. Now I drag down and I'm getting numbers here. So let's look at this, this calculation is. This calculation is one plus, and this still means B4, times D7. So I'm doing, I'm computing one plus B4, and um, B4 is still this number, so that's that, that 0 0.0041 um, number. And I still now want to use this number right here because this is how much I now owe on the loan at the end of the second month. So this looks like this calculation here might be exactly what I want. I could also put the dollar sign in front of B if I don't want the cell reference. If, I, if I'm dragging across this way, I want to keep the B. So if I want to keep want to make sure that I keep both the B and the four, I can put a dollar sign in front of the B, click, shift, click, drag down, and I still get the same answer because this calculation um, is uh, here. I, let me put the dollar sign in front of there. Now I hit return. Okay, so here's there, there, there. So the numbers uh, stay the same. It's still a reference to B4 here. But in this particular example, I don't need that because it stays B because I'm in column B as I continue to drag down. Okay, so this is what I owe at the end of the third month right here. Now let's drag, let's do this selection of these three values and drag, keep dragging down. Now I said I want the loan to go 60 months. So I'll drag down here till I get to a 60 right there. Okay. Sir, sorry for interrupting, but I guess Manisha has some questions. She's yep. raising her hand. Okay, yeah, I, I didn't see that. Go, go ahead, what's your question? Sir, I have a question. Where this one plus came from? I'm just confused. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, so because let's let's go back to this value right in here. My original loan is ten thousand dollars. Okay, after the end of a month, I owe ten thousand dollars plus this amount times ten thousand dollars. So let me just write over here. I could say I e I owe ten thousand that amount plus. this amount times 10,000. So this amount is this times 10,000, oops, sorry, which is that, I hit return. So this is what I owe at the end of the first month when I add in the interest. So this is B2 plus B4 times D2. 
but you use a little algebra, you can factor out the, the B2, right? This is the same thing. Let me do the calculation here. Oh, not a plus, equal sign. This is the same thing as, let me put in parentheses, B4 plus one times B2. So you see this, B4 plus one times B2 is the same thing as B2 plus B4 times B2. So here, I just use a little bit of algebra and factor out the B2 out of this expression. Um, does that answer your question? Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, I hope it answers your question. Um, sometimes people are hesitant after the professor explains something and if they still don't understand it, sometimes they hesitate to say, no, I still don't understand it. Um, but this expression is exactly the same as this expression, except one case I factored out B2. And so that's where the one plus comes from. So now let's just check one of these numbers to see if it makes sense. This should be one plus B4 times D12. D12 is this number. So this is what I owe at the end of the 12th month. And then when the interest gets added at the beginning of the 13th month, I now owe this amount. Okay, so at the end of the 12th month, this is what I owe. I make a $50 payment, and this is now the new amount that I owe. So you see, I've been paying this loan off for five years, and I barely made a dent in that original 10000 And like I said before, if I just paid off exactly 4167 here, let me write that. 41.67 there. Now I drag this down. Okay. Okay, I'm getting some errors here. And um, let's see what that is. I get B3 plus B5 times B3. Now you see what's happening here is B5 is a word remaining. Okay, so uh, I, I made a mistake here, right in here, a mistake somehow. Let's look at this. B6 plus B7, this is B6, uh, sorry, B6 plus C6. So this amount plus this amount is this amount. But here I have B3 times B5 plus B3. So it's somehow getting the wrong number there. So let's go back into here. Let me, un let me just undo that step. Edit, undo autofill. Now, let's see, I have this is one plus B4 times D6. This is C6. This is B7 plus C7, this plus that, which is what I should have here. Let's look at this one. One plus B4 times D7. Here is D7 right here. So I have that plus that. So, um, uh, so when I do this, I'm, I want to emphasize this. Whenever I do a selection and drag like this, it's really important because sometimes you'll still make an error, but you won't get an obvious indication that you have an error here. And so it's really important 
to go back and check your cell values in a few cases to make sure that something isn't going wrong in the calculation. And that's, that's one of the most common mistakes that I make uh, in Excel is I assume that if I'm doing a drag to just reproduce a calculation, that the numbers are, are being inserted correctly and when I've made some stupid mistake on this. So let me do undo autofill here. So, and the reason why there's a mistake, by the way, is that notice that the calculation, this calculation here, right, this one right here, uses this number as the original loan amount. This calculation here uses this number as the original loan amount. So when I click here and click here and drag down, because the calculation is referencing this number, when I drag down here, I'm not pulling out the, the correct values. So when I click and drag, it's important to click and drag here and drag. Let me show you. See, I don't get an error when I do that. OK, now notice also, by the way, that I'm not paying off much of the loan here. I'm paying off, you know, like less than a penny of the original amount every month. And there's some round off calculations going there because I'm only calculating. Uh, I uh, only calculating to the to the penny here when I'm doing money calculations. I'm assuming that. So, so now, okay, so 4167 doesn't pay off any of the loan. At the end of um, 60 months, I'm right here. I haven't even paid off a dollar of the original loan. Okay, so let me come back and put in my $50 here. There. Okay, now. So 4167 doesn't pay off the loan. $50 doesn't pay off the loan. Now, one thing I could just do right here is I could keep increasing this amount, checking down here at 60 months. This is this would be this row right here to see uh, what dollar amount I have to put in for my monthly payment to pay off the loan in exactly 60 months. So I could do that calculate. I could do trial and error to figure that out. So if I'm uh, if I think I have a good idea what the amount is or whatever, I can just go in and start plugging in numbers here. So let's try that. Let's just plug in numbers. So I'm going to click this here. Let me put in a hundred dollars every month. What happens? A hundred dollars. You see, I still don't have the loan paid off at 60 months, but you know I've paid off more than $3,000, so $100 is doing a lot better than $50. Now, if I pay off $100 every month. I, I haven't quite paid off half of the loan in 60 months, so let me jump it up to $200 and see what happens. Now let's go down to 60 months. Wow, that's getting really close. I only have 235, 236 dollars left. So let's try 250 dollars. And there, I've after 48 months, I've almost paid off the loan, and then 49 months, I have more than paid off the loan. I on this last month. I only owe $211.27. So if I actually paid this amount, this this number would be zero or close to it, close to zero at that point. So that means 250 is a little bit too much. So I can do trial and error here to try to figure out. Let's do 240. Now after 60 months, uh, still. I'm overpaid here just by a bit, but notice it's taken me a little bit longer here uh, because I'm paying a little bit less. So 
so I could go in here and just play with this number. Let's I don't know what the right number is. Let, let's let's just guess. Let's say 30 should get us a little bit closer. And it does. Okay. So you see uh that's one way I could do the calculation is a go in there and just guess, keep guessing at the monthly payment in order to figure out how I can pay off the loan in exactly uh, 60 months. Now, Excel has a built in function called goal seek. Now, let's try to use that. Uh, I think that will help us uh, get the, the right answer to this problem. And so I go back up here. I'm going to go look on the ribbon. And goal seek is a data analysis function. So I do data. And it's under what if analysis. So what if. I click on what if and there's goal seek. Right there. So. So how do I use this here? Uh, what I want to do is I want the value in this cell right here after 60 months, the value in the loan that I owe, or is it the, not that cell, sorry, I want this to be zero. So I want the number in this to be zero. So at this point, after paying off the loan for five years, the amount that I owe the bank is zero. So I want to set the value. What is this cell? This is cell D60, D60. Oh, I'm so, uh, um, okay, I, I made a mistake there. This is D6, this, I don't wanna go to row 60, I wanna go to month 60. Notice here that my first month is at row six. So I, I was making a mistake there. I apologize, that's it as I tell people, I'm old and easily confused. Um, now, so I want to go down here to 60 right here. So I want this value right here to be zero. So this is D65 to be zero. So I want to set this value to zero. And I want to change cell. I want to figure out what my monthly payment is. And that was, what was that? Was that A5? Let me just put in. This is, nope, this is C. I want to change this value, which is C6. Okay, so I want to change C6, change this value to make this value zero. So let me click OK. Let me see if, if that works. See, see if I remember how to use goal seek right. So, so what Excel does, Excel goes through picking values here and it has a uh, an algorithm for uh, you know picking and then figuring out a second pick and another pick and so on and it says if I pay 188 71 cents a month then when I get down here I'll say okay to 60 months which is right here 60 months right here I now owe zero and this is telling me that's how I do it I pay off this a month this amount so and that seems about right here based on the calculations we've been doing so this is how to do an amortization calculation on a loan and how to use goal seek goal seek i've also used goal seek i don't think you guys uh in in the comms and media arena would use i've used goal seek to find um solutions to algebra problems to find you know, what are the what are the roots of a polynomial and that type of thing so goal seek is uh, a very convenient way to solve problems in excel and uh, so that's using goal seek to uh, figure out what our monthly loan payment has to be at five percent per year interest rate on a $10,000 loan. OK, now I could change the loan amount or change it from five years to six years, right? Six years would would be 
instead of 60 months would be 72 months. Figure out uh, how long it's going to take me to pay back uh, and what amount, uh, I, what amount I have to pay back every month to pay off the loan in six years. And I, so I could keep playing around, trying a different number of months uh, and finding the, the amount that I have to pay. Now, let's just look at this number, for instance, there. Again, I owe, uh, my original loan is 10000 The first month, I've accumulated 4167 in um, because of the interest added. And then I pay off this amount. So the 4167 of this amount is going to pay off the interest I've accumulated. And then the rest of it is paying off the original loan. Now, it's interesting when doing amortization calculations is to ask the question, and at least here in the States, the banks will tell you how much money you pay back over the entire length of the loan. So, the, so after five years, how much money do I pay back? So I could do equals here. I want to add up all the numbers here. Um, sorry, wrong, wrong, wrong column. I want to add up all these numbers to say how much I've paid back. So I want to go right here. Okay. There, let me just escape that. So I want to go here. Equal. I want to add up all these numbers here. So how much have I paid the bank at the end of five years? So I put equals and then I do sum. And I want the first number of the sum what was it? A6. Uh, I have to go back. Let me just put in some things and see what happens. Uh, A6. I want to do colon and then A65. A65. Now that's uh, saying I'm. Now, OK, you see, I made a mistake. I'm adding up the numbers in this column and I want C6 through C65. So let me change that to C. Now, remember I told you first class, technically I should be putting in uppercase here. Uh, and uh, But Excel automatically recognizes that we don't have any lowercase columns and will immediately substitute in the uppercase value. Let me hit return. So this is now the sum sum C5 through C65. This is summing up all the payments I have made to the bank over five years. And it says I have paid the bank $11,323. So I borrowed 10,000 and I paid the bank back more than 11,000. So the bank has actually made more than $1,000 on the loan. Now, interesting here to note that I paid 10,000 and I pay back over 11,000. Now, if I pay back exactly 11,000, that would be 10% of the amount of the loan. So I'm paying back the bank more than 10% of the original amount of the loan. And this is sort of one way banks can hide the numbers from you they in that they're telling you you have an interest rate of 5% a year. And if you're not thinking and you immediately say, OK, well, this loan is going to cost me 5% of $10,000. But it's not 5%. It actually comes out to more than 10%. So what I end up paying back to bank is more than 10% on the original loan over five years. And usually, uh, I don't know what the requirements are in, in your individual countries. In the United States, uh, they have consumer protection laws that require the bank to tell you actually what your total payback amount is. So the bank will have to give you this number. So it's telling you 
you have a 5% interest rate, but the amount that you pay back is actually this, which is more than double that 5%. Now, I could, um, I could experiment with different numbers in here to determine uh, if I want to compare two banks. Suppose one is charging me 5% and one is only charging me 4.5% on the loan. I could go in here and I could put in 4, 5. Now there, with a lower amount on the interest rate, as I, and I'm still paying 188.71, I notice that the loan is now paid off and almost paid off at month 59, and it's more than paid off in month 60. So in that case, I would have to redo my goal seat calculation to see what my monthly payment would have to be. So I, let's do that here. Um, I uh, pull up goal seek again. Remember, it's in one if analysis. Goal seek. Okay. Now, set cell. I don't want to set cell before. I want to set, I'm um, trying to set cell the here, C6. C6. So I'm trying to pick this value so that down here, no, see, yeah, this is my age is showing here. Let me, let me zero that in. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to make this last cell down here be zero. So I want to, that cell right here, which is, D65, I'm going to set cell D65 to value zero by changing cell. And that change cell, I think it was C6, C6. Right here, C6, yes, I hit OK. So now, with a slightly lower interest rate, my monthly payment should be 186.43. OK, so my monthly payment is a little bit lower now uh, because of the lower interest rate. And at the end of 60 months, this is how much I pay back. And it's a little bit lower than it was at 5%. So you can compare how much you end up paying back on the loan uh, with different interest rates. And when you borrow money like this, whether to buy anything it is frequently to your advantage to pay off a little bit more than you need to. So for example, at four and a half percent interest it says I need to pay 186.43 and I pay off the loan in exactly five years. But at some point, I suppose I, I, I agreed to this with the bank that this is what I need to pay. But then it turns out, surprise, surprise, I have a little bit extra money and I can pay off $200 now instead of 186. So in that case, I'm still doing four and a half percent interest, but now I can afford to pay $200 and notice that I now pay off the loan uh, several months earlier, okay, and um, and here, um, okay, th this calculation isn't going to be right. Why? Because this calculation is adding up this 200, this 200, this 200, this 200, and this 200. So I have to take those numbers out of the, the amount. Uh, uh, so I don't want to add those into that. So I can subtract those off in my head. I have one, two, three, four, about, I have a, about $1,000 here of extra 200s. And uh, it's always to your advantage, especially in the early part of a loan, to pay off a little bit more than you're required to pay 
because all of that extra payment reduces the number of your reduces the amount of your loan. The amount that I, I go to paying interest is still thirty seven fifty, and everything over and above thirty seven fifty here is going off to paying down the t the original ten thousand. Okay, um, amortization calculations. Now, I um, I think that if you're not familiar with these types of calculations, that it would be to your advantage. So this I view this as a life skill. Uh, knowing uh, how to compute payments on a loan and how quickly you can pay off a loan uh, is an important skill. Is what happens uh, with credit cards, and I don't know how your banks in Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan and Kazakhstan, I don't know how they do these calculations. I'm assuming it might change a bit from country to country. Um, but it's a I consider it to be important to know uh, how to pay off loans and what works to your advantage and what works to your disadvantage. And with credit cards, I charge something on a credit card. Credit cards usually require my monthly payment to be only very, very small. A credit card, you know, could take many, many, many months to pay off a loan. They only require a little bit more than the interest that I've earned. So uh, it's not inconceivable to me that at the end of the first month, I would owe $10,37.50 and a credit card might require that I pay, uh, pay $40, let's say. And credit cards are designed to keep you paying forever. And uh, they, you know, they want you to borrow that ten thousand dollars, and they want you to be paying it back for the rest of your life. So, in that case, when you do the sum of all the money, all the payments you've made over the life of a loan, it'll be a huge amount. You know, and credit cards, where I'm borrowing ten thousand, at the end of it, I could have be paying twenty thousand back or more to pay off. The original ten thousand. So, with with me, and you know, not everybody can do this. Um, you know, but when I use a credit card, and then I get my bill at the end of the month, it, with most credit cards here in the states, if you pay off the entire bill within a month after you've incurred the bill. So I buy something for $10,000, and if I pay back that original $10,000 at the end of the first month, I don't pay the bank anything. I don't pay any interest whatsoever. It's not uncommon for credit cards to have interest rates in excess of 20%. And um, so you are paying a fortune if you only pay your minimum monthly payment on a credit card. So I highly recommend you borrow money on a credit card, you pay it off as quickly as you can, and if possible, pay it all off at the end of the first month. So I actually never borrow money using a credit card. I basically use the credit card as a billing service. I never charge more money onto a credit card than I can afford to pay off at the end of the month. If I need to, to take a larger loan for some reason, to buy a house or buy a car, uh, that I go to the bank and see what the interest rate is that the bank charges because you pay by, back a lot less money if you borrow the money on an individual loan from the bank than you do on a credit card. So that's um, everything that I have to say about amortization calculations. Um, it might be interesting for you if you have actually have taken some loans out recently and the bank 
has given you a monthly payment chart and how much you have to pay back every month to pay back your loan, try to set it up in Excel and compare your numbers with those that the bank gave you. And it should be within pennies. You should be able to get pretty much exactly what it is that you need to pay by running an Excel calculation. OK, now let me finish there. Uh, and um, with this, like I said, it was only one topic, but it's, it's taken up most of an hour here. And uh, does anybody have any questions right now on how I do these calculations? And I've told you how to use Goal Seek and the what if analysis, Goal Seek. And I've shown you how to use dollar signs when you make cell references in Excel calculations, dollar sign uh, here to keep it from incrementing the cells when I do click and drag. And um, those are uh, important things, particularly using the dollar signs on the click and drag. So let me see, anybody have any questions? I'd be surprised if there aren't because um, doing these amortization calculations can be confusing at first. OK. Let me see. OK, I'm not hearing any uh, questions on there. I'm assuming that everything is absolutely crystal clear, which would be a mistake. I've said this before, students are sometimes afraid to ask questions. Um, and um, OK, so that's amortization, uh, loan amortization. And uh, so that's it. Um, look. Um, Look at the homework question, and um, you might want to start looking at the uh, what you might be interested in doing on the COVID calculations, where I've sent you uh, the link to how to download that that COVID Excel spreadsheet. And uh, so that that's it for today's lecture, guys. Um, Thank you. If anything, we can just rewatch your video. It doesn't oh. seem that hard. Okay. I yeah, it's you know, but it's I don't it's not that hard. But you know, it, it sometimes I might make a mistake and say something wrong. Uh, and um, you know, it's it's easy to get confused, even on a simple topic. It's easy to get confused, and and uh, so I, I just. You know, that happens to me, it happens to me more and more as I get older. It's easier to get confused. So, OK, so uh, I'll see you guys then uh, on Tuesday and uh, have a good weekend. Thank, Thank you. you. You too. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.